please, I'm scared. Don't worry, boss, we'll get him. Yeah, we got him. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, no problem, boss. No problem. Well, I guess I'll just wait here a while, and uh, would one of you mind getting me a drink or something, too? Sure, boss, whatever you need. Whatever you need. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnish of all ages, do you like ghosts? Well, how about these specific ghosts that you carry around with you? Do you enjoy their company, or are they simply there because someone told you that they were the best one a while back, and you decided to move forward without question? Not that there's anything wrong with sticking to one summon through the entire game, but if you do, you are locking off an entire massive mechanical side of this already behemoth-sized game. While some summons, in some situations, are, are simply undeniably the best, the community as a whole seems to have boiled down to majoritally just using just two or three summons. Everyone, the Mimic tier mainly, Black Knife Tish secondarily, and Clean Rot Knight Finley doing a lot as well. All of these deal really good damage and are relatively evasive for their own reasons, and this makes them quite strong. However, as with most things in the game, something that is strong right now against the enemy that you're currently facing could easily be weak when fighting the thing in the next room. Everything is situational. Some summons are great all the time, which is why they're the top ones, but some are just godly in niche situations. Sometimes, even more than that, you might want to summon that does more utility than just pure damage, and that is where these guys will come in handy. Without further ado then, today I'll be showing you guys 5 underrated summons in Elden Ring. First up is going to be the Great Shield Soldiers Summon. When I talked about utility over pure damage, these guys are about the best that you could possibly get. Five soldiers wielding absolutely massive hunks of metal as shields and occasionally throwing in some ghost flame from the back as well. Unsurprisingly, they are incredibly tanky. They last forever, and they do a good job of taking aggro as they use really fast hitting weapon skills on their shields. I used all of these summons on similar targets, letting them do combat by themselves as much as possible as for a bit of a showcase. But obviously as you may expect, this one won't come anywhere near close to the actual damage numbers of other summons unless it's against an enemy with low poise. They actually destroy things with low poise. However, their main purpose is simply to stay alive, take very little damage, and draw attention, which they do brilliantly, if I say myself. As a result, this can easily find a slot in anyone's handful of common use summons. To acquire it for yourself, head to Nokron the Eternal City, specifically the eponymous site of Grace, and then from there, head to the east, but instead of going through the archway, check out the little courtyard to the right of it. Atop a small staircase in front of some gravestones, you'll find these spirit ashes waiting to be claimed. Secondly is Latena, the Albanaric Summon. This one is a little bit more involved for a number of reasons, but if you haven't seen this summon before, this should be one that tells you there, there's a touch more going on to this system than meets the eye. This is Latena. She stands more or less still where you summon her, and then she unloads massive bursts of magical arrows at your target when they are in her range, which, if you are wondering, is an insanely long range. The best advantage of her being completely unwilling to move is that you can just sort of put her on a sniper perch and let her fling off homing magical arrows from a mile away in safety doing tons of damage. Essentially, she is the spirit summon version of the super annoying Albanaric archer enemies, and to back that up, if you summon her when you happen to be near an enemy dire wolf, she will actually tame it and ride it beside you. How cool is that. Of course, this just makes her stronger, but it requires uh, not just a little bit niche, but extremely niche situation where you're both near a dire wolf and require the aid of a spirit summon. So, I can make it happen! I can make it happen! However, the fact that an interaction like that even exists is crazy to me. All that said, her damage in actual combat is really good. It's really consistent as well, and she does it from a safe distance. So while she may not be a tank by any means, she's actually quite squishy, she is great for poking away at something while you stay up close in the brunt of it all. In fact, she may not be getting the best light in this footage right now except the big group AoE stuff that I'll show you, just because she works really well when she isn't being focused by the boss, which is obviously easy to accomplish in normal gameplay, but hard to accomplish when I'm trying to test purely the summon with no input from myself. To acquire this summon for yourself, you'll need to make a couple of stops. First go to the village of the Albanarics in Liernia. From the site of grace, travel east towards a couple of jars. Hit the suspicious one to reveal a man named Albus. He'll give you half of the Halig Tree medallion and ask you to deliver it to someone named Latena. To do so, go to the lakeside crystal cave in the south of Limgrave. Progress downward through the cave to reach 
the boss. Defeat the boss and a passage will open behind said boss to the slumbering wolf shack. If you arrive late in the story, you will simply find these spirit ashes on the ground. But if you arrive earlier, you will meet Lutena, and she will offer to purposefully become spirit ashes to assist you on your journey. Either way that this happens, you will acquire this summon here. Third up is going to be a big old group of friends. This one called the Demi-Human Ashes. This brings out a whole collection of five people to assist you in battle, each of them wielding slightly different weaponry from each other and having different combat styles as well. As a result, if an enemy is resistant to one specific type of damage, it won't really slow this group down at all. As well, while being a multiple target summon usually makes things weaker to area of effect attacks, since these guys all have different fighting patterns from each other, they all move differently, and as a result, they generally don't go down to the same attack the way that normal groups will to AoE attacks. As well, a special thing with them, the same way that it affects regular demi-human enemies, at night these guys are actually a fair bit stronger and notably more aggressive as well, by which I mean normally summons will only engage in combat with enemies that have shown aggression towards you, whereas nighttime demi-humans will seek out combat with anything that breathes in their vicinity. Essentially, while they aren't the best straight up damage or the tankiest, they take a surprising amount of effort for a boss to actually kill, even compared to normal multiple target summons, and they have so many damage types that they are almost guaranteed to be somewhat effective in any situation. To acquire these guys, you will have to defeat a boss in the Weeping Peninsula. Specifically, go to the Impaler's Catacombs area. This place is mostly straightforward, except once you reach this room with an elevating floor trap. The solution is to make it go up a little bit, then drop back down, and then sneak underneath where it was. From here, it's a straight path to the lever. With the lever open, go to the boss door and defeat what is inside to receive the Demi-Human Ashes. Fourthly is the Ancestral Spirit Ashes. This is the spirit of one of the horned guys that you'll find down in the Seofra River. He uses a big bow from a long distance and switches to an axe when up close. And while that isn't overly unique, he is quite tanky, and on top of that, he actually heals himself when killing an enemy, which means that this one, in the right situation, can sort of last literally forever. If you are in a big group battle, he will use that to sustain himself. As opposed to normal summons who just sort of have an expiry date, his only time limit is the fuel which he consumes, which is human life. So, you know, as long as you are willing to feed that to him, I'm sure he'll be fine. His damage is much lesser than something like Latena, even at range, another archer who I mentioned earlier, but he is tankier than her, he is more mobile than her, at least until Latena gets a wolf, obviously, and also the healing on kill gives him a unique role in utility as being exceptional at either bosses who spawn little enemies alongside them, or even for use in a more, like, level-clearing open-world scenario as a summon, as he will just last a super long time. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, this one isn't particularly strong, but in a group scenario, you'd be surprised how valuable it can be. To acquire this one for yourself, you'll need to defeat a boss in the Siofra River area, one that requires a small bit of unlocking. The main thing that you need to do is light eight torches across the area, just like this one. Here they all are on the map. Just run to them and interact to do that. Then head to the Hallowhorn Grounds by the Siofra River Bank site of Grace and interact with the carcass within to be brought to a boss fight. Kill the boss inside and you'll be rewarded with this spirit summon. Fifth then, finally today is a bit of a wild card, mostly because I just freaking adore it, the Soul Jar of Fortune Ashes. This one costs health rather than FP, which is quite rare for spirit summons, and also makes it more of a viable choice for people with smaller FP bars. When you use this, you'll summon three small jar warriors. They are lovely little fellows, and they are just as likely to hurt you as they are your enemies. What do I mean by that? Well, when these little friends die, they explode, which is both amazing and hilarious. And of course, this explosion has friendly fire, so definitely be wary while using them at close range. But that's, it's sort of why I love it. There are so many, so many summons in this game, and a ton of them that you've probably never even seen because you probably just picked a few and stuck to them, which means that so many people, so many people who play this game might just never experience the glory of summoning exploding jar warriors. I mean, come on, how can you be all right with missing out on this moment for yourself knowing that you can make it happen in the game. Honestly, they're not very good, not statistically. This summon is underrated because it's fucking lovely, not because it's powerful, And unfortunately. They're really bad at getting the attention of enemies in the first place. Their melee hit damage is okay, but not great. And even the explosion itself just doesn't do as much damage as you'd like. In any case, I think they are worth having in your kit just because who doesn't want to say that they have exploding friends, okay? To acquire these guys, you will need to defeat the boss of the Ariza side tomb dungeon just outside of the 
northern inner wall of Landell, the capital city. And that'll just about do it, everyone. I've been Cotton Dinosaur from Rage Gaming Videos, and this has been five underrated spirit summons in Elden Ring. No, they may not be quite as intelligent as your mimic tier. They may not remove the same massive chunks of health that Black Knife Tish can do, but they can all do good for their own reasons, and more than that, they are extremely interesting and fun too. And well, why wouldn't you want to know more about the lesser explored interesting and fun parts of this game? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye